Just recently, I sat with a pastor who uh, went through the seven churches of Revelation. And he took a Sunday night each one and uh, took 30, 45 minutes. And I said, there's a problem here. He needs to take three Sunday nights on each church. <laughs> well, now we're following it down to 10 minutes. So uh, I'm being critical of myself as well. Uh, I'd like to start by reading 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11 it says now all these things happen to them for examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the earth are come verse 12 says wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall you know folks uh, we look at these churches and we can be very critical of them uh, we look here at the ruins and over and over again we're told there's no Christian population things were written for our admonition, but we need to take heed lest we fall into an error. I'd like to start with a word of prayer. Father, I ask you that as we consider this church, that Father, you would help us to take heed lest we fall, take heed lest we become a casualty, even as some of these churches have become. Father, we ask you to bless the words, the words of Christ name we pray. Amen. Looking back to where it talks about the church at Thyatira. This is the church that is spoken the most extensively to. It's the longest one. And so I'm not going to read the whole passage. I'm going to read it as we go along. And first of all, it considers the church. So the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet are like brass. There are three things that it tells us, identifies Jesus Christ as, first of all, as the Son of God. And folks, I trust there's no one here that thinks other than Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He is God come in the flesh. There are many, even in professed Christians, people who are in churches that would deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Folks, if our Savior, if our Jesus is not God, He is not a Savior, and He cannot save right. us from our sins. Yep. And so, first of all, He's identified as the Son of God. The second thing, He says He has eyes like the flame of fire. Now, this isn't the uh, eyes of, of someone looking passionately at somebody in love and adoration. This is one who, it's a flame of fire, looking right through you knowing what the intents of your heart are, knowing what yeah. your motivations are. And then his feet are like fine brass. And if you look throughout the scripture, fine brass is, the, uh, brass is associated with judgment, of, of standing before uh, one who would judge with these eyes of fire. And then it comes to his knowledge. Aren't you glad? You know, this is a two-edged sword. God knows everything. Jesus knows everything. And that's a great comfort. He knows our motivation. But it's also a fearsome thing. He knows our motivation. And, and sometimes our motivations are pure and good and, 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 and uh, fine. Other times they're selfish and mean and uh, retaliatory. And so he, he knows. And looks what he knows. He knows their works, their love, their service, the faith, their patience, their works, and the last to be more than the first. They're growing in these things. These, I mean, I wish I could stop right here, right now. I wish. I think all of us would like to stop right here, right now. And if you if you look at it, it in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says uh, that and now there are these three, faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these is charity. They're right here. Faith, hope, and love. Patience is, is the, the hope there. Okay? So, Paul is these are the things that Paul exhorts, that he encourages, and these are the things that the church had. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. I hope that could be said of my church, your church, my life. You know, th these were true churches. They were churches, literal churches, but they speak to our all kinds of churches that are in the world at that time and even now. But you know, I think it also speaks to us as individuals that, that the, the, the church is made up of individuals. We can't say, oh, that's the church, that's not me. No, 
you, you are the church. Uh, the church isn't the building. The church is the people. And, and so what is said about the church is going to be said about us as individuals. And so uh, th these things are, they're, they're growing in these things and they're wonderful. But then he says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophet, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto uh, idols. And the reason I started out with 1 Corinthians chapter 10, these things are written for our example. It, I don't believe anybody named their child Jezebel. I, I believe this is just uh, somebody, as Phoebe has, she has said, uh, is in the spirit of Jezebel, in, in the nature of Jezebel. And you go back to the kings and you look at what uh, Jezebel was like. You remember Naboth's uh, vineyard? Ahab, he, he was a pouty, whiny guy, and he, and he wants he wants Naboth's vineyard. And she says, well, I'll get it for you. I mean, I believe she was he was controlled by this woman. And I believe this woman was a, was a devious, demonic, uh, idol worshiper and 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 she said Let, let's get two people to accuse this this man of, of sedition and and they false accusations has anything changed in the world today false accusations abound uh, people are in jail in Russia people are in jail in China for false accusations in, in America I would submit to you there are people in jails under false accusations and, and, and so nothing has changed. And, and these things are written for our examples. And this woman had, was teaching in the church. And she was teaching them to, to uh, about fornication. Now, fornication, it may have been literal fornication. Uh, it, it may have been the, uh, sleeping sexually in, in immorality. But I think probably more it, it, it's fornication speaks of uh, idolatry and fornication are equated in the scripture. Uh, fornication uh, is is talked about prostitution, spiritual prostitution, and and we heard about the guilds, we heard about the, the 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 joining of the club, and in order to join a club, you had to meet certain specifications, you had to do certain things, and one of them was to deny the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so she was teaching them that it was all right to compromise with the world. It was all right to do these things in order to be a part of the club. Folks, nothing has changed. The church today is thought to be uh, uh, old-fashioned if we say that a man's a man and a, boy, and a woman's a woman. If we say that there's such a thing as, as uh, a marriage between a man and a woman only. The church is teaching these things. And I'm not talking about the liberal churches of, of years ago. I'm talking about churches that would call themselves evangelical. I'm talking about churches that, that, that have prided themselves in the most recent past of being conservative. Folks, the scripture alone is our guide. And we can't uh, change it. We can't massage it to mean something else. And that's what Jezebel was doing. He was, she was teaching the people of Israel to be uh, syncretistic, to, to take to take Astra, to take Baal, to take uh, all these false gods and to, to join them together with Jehovah, the covenant-keeping God. And, and, and no, we can't do that. And that's what, so we go back to Jezebel in the Kings and we bring it to the, the first century of the church and they were doing the exact same yeah. things. Paul warns the Corinthians, be careful because take heed, lest you become proud and you fall for the same thing. And here we're in the 21st century. And I would submit to you, we're, we're falling for the yeah. very same yeah. thing. And then he goes on and he says, I, I, I wanna show you something here in verse 23. Well, verse 22 says, except they repent of their deeds, I'm going to throw them into great tribulation. But notice this, and this is part of the sadness here that I have. And I will kill their children with death. Folks, what we do as parents <coughs> has an effect on <coughs> and our children. I'm blessed with having six children. All that are walking with the Lord. Amen. I am blessed. Amen. Twenty 
grandchildren. Hallelujah. And folks, my wow. prayer is that today and every day I will walk faithfully with the Lord because what I do affects them. Amen. And folks, if we will not stand for the truth of the Word of God, then our grandchildren will not stand for the truth of the Word of God. Sure. And, and our whole society will affect Folks, the scripture says, don't despise the day of small things. I don't care if you're a church of 10 or a church of 100 or a church of 1,000. Folks, what is done in the home? There was yeah. an old preacher when I was a little boy that said, as goes the church, so goes the nation. Well, I've changed it a little bit. As goes the family, so goes the church, yeah. so goes the nation. And folks, the church starts in the home. Yeah, and the parents need to be that which are teaching their children. But more than that, and, and, and I, I, I skipped over it, but I think more than Jezebel teaching, she was demonstrating for them by her own actions how to live, how to act, what to do. And so as they looked at her, they said, well, Jezebel's doing it. The leader, the prophetess, she's doing it. Why can't I do it? Somebody a long time ago said this, what the parents do in uh, moderation, the children will do in excess. And I've seen it over and over and over again. Quickly as we close here, it says, but unto you I say, Unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put onto you none other burden. You see, there were some people that were holding the line. There were some people that were doing what they needed to be doing, that had rejected the false teaching. And and the, the Lord says, I'm not going to put any further burden on you. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep serving. Keep loving. You see, this is the only church that it's mentioned that they had love. We haven't gotten to Ephesus yet. It's the first one, but we haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, Ephesus, their problem was lack of love. <coughs> this one was that they had a perversion of love. Love meant accepting everything and Sure. Wow. No, right. love is standing for truth, that's for right. righteousness, Amen. for the word of God, for Jesus Christ. Amen. And so that's the true love. And we see there that they they had a this kind of perverted love of, of acceptance and accommodation. <coughs> and then he says this. He that overcometh and keep my words to the end, to him I will give power over the nations and he shall rule with them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my Father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Brothers and sisters, one day those of us that have remained faithful to Jesus Christ will rule and reign with him. We may die today, but we will rule tomorrow. We may suffer today, but we will be with him for all eternity. And folks, let me tell it will be worth it all yeah. when we see Jesus. Yeah. 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 Let's pray. Amen. Father, I ask you this day that we would not be discouraged. Father, we see these churches and they've disappeared for the face of the earth. Father, may that not be our lot yeah. as we are in America. May we stand for truth we stand for your word. May we not be ashamed of the gospel, for it is the only power of God that is able to save us. And so, Father, we ask you this day that our, our trust, our reliance would be on Christ and his shed blood on the cross for us and that alone. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.